Hello dear friends. I appreciate you tuning in on me again. I want to speak to you about a little five, about a ten minute message on on the fact that uh, we, we need to know why we are here anyway. Why are we here in this life? I think we can find some some truths as we read in the first chapter of Genesis. In the beginning we we'll find out why we are here. First chapter, verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moves upon the waters. And so we see here that in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Now we believe this is true because we believe the Word of God is truth. Well, we believe that the Bible, the uh, book of Genesis, was written by Moses, and he was moved upon by the Holy Spirit in writing, so that every word is written by the power of the Holy Spirit upon those who wrote the Bible. And therefore it is the Word of God, and it is without error. There is no mistake in the Word of God. And so we find it in the beginning. Now, in the beginning means that in the beginning of time as we know it because God Almighty had no beginning this is something that we find very difficult to understand but we're thinking about and talking about a God that's eternal oh an awesome mighty omnipotent God uh, we, the Bible says that God had no beginning of years nor shall he have any ending of life from everlasting to everlasting, He is God. And so we see God always was. He never had a beginning. He was always there when there was nothing there at all but God. And God saw that He, and, re, and, and in, his, in His desire, He, just, he, just, he, he, in, he intended to do that which was pleasant for man and pleasant for Him. God is love, and love wants somebody to love, and love desires to be loved. And so God, the Bible says, is love, and therefore he created uh, the, the, the universe. He created the heavens and the earth and all the planets, but he created the earth for man and woman to dwell in it and to multiply and to be uh, people of the earth that could love him and whom he could love. He wanted fellowship with people. He wanted to have fellowship with you. And therefore he created you. And before he created you, he created everything that we would need. And that is, he created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then the Holy Spirit moved upon the face of the waters. And so the Holy Spirit it had a part in creation. We believe in the in the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That is the Father God, the Jehovah God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Son of God, and the Holy Spirit. Now we believe this is true. Now and again, again in the beginning it says, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. God said, let there be light. He spoke light into being. Now, it's different from the sun because later on he, he, uh, uh, he, he gave, he gave uh, later on he, he, uh, he created the sun for, the, for day and the moon by night. And so we see over in the book of Revelation in the 21st chapter it says, in speaking of heaven, the new Jerusalem, the city had no need of the light of the temple because the Lord God is the temple of it. And that and the city had no need of the sun or the moon to shine upon it, for the glory of God to shine on it, and the Lamb, and, and the Lamb of God, which is Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God is the light thereof. And so here's a light. Here's a light that just comes from God Almighty. And he spoke and said, Let there be light, and there was light. And so we can see then that that the that it was created this way. Now how did Jesus Christ fit into creation? We find over in the book of John, in the first chapter of John, these words, 
in the beginning there it is again in the beginning in the beginning uh, the word was with God and the word was God and all things were made by him and there was not anything made that was not made by him and he's talking about the word the word was with God in the beginning and it was God and there's nothing made without him and then it goes on to say the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld him as the only begotten son Jesus Christ the Lord and so the word signifies Jesus Christ and so Jesus Christ is divine God said let there be light and there was light he said let there be land and sea and there was land and sea he said, let there be a son, and there was the son. He spoke everything into being. All the land and all the animals and, every, and all the herbs and all the fish and the sea and the birds of the air. He spoke, and it was so. Now, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and it was God, and the Word was made flesh, and His name is Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ is God. He is part of the, what we call the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And I thank God for that because we need to recognize that is important. Now then, we need to know too that God made man and woman. He made male and female. He made, uh, he made everything uh, from his word except man. He, he made, made man from the dust of the earth. And man became a living soul. And so it was that that we find how he made man and then he took from man's side while he slept he, he took his rib and, and he made a woman and then he said to them you shall go forth and all this I've made is for you he made all the rivers and the land and the waters and the heavens and the, oh, he, he made all the things that grow and all the herbs of the field and even the meat that we're to eat we have all these things that God has given so that we could enjoy them in this life. And so we'll understand later on about another message I'll bring when I have more time. And that is how it all became so marred as it is today. It became marred because of sin. But we'll get on that message at a later date. Right now, I want you to see that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That the Holy Father God spoke everything into being and the Holy Spirit was part of that creation. Praise the Lord. What a creator. When you look at a beautiful painting, you think, my goodness, that, was, that artist was really good. You think of the artist that painted it. And, I mean, it didn't just jump up there for nothing. The artist had to work on that and paint it. And so when you look at the stars and the moon and the sun and the clouds and all of creation, the beauty of it, the mountains, the rills and the valleys, you can know that there had to be a creator, and that creator is the Lord God. And we see that. We know that man sinned, and because of that he fell from, from the place of being uh, right with God and became depraved and wrong, and he needs to be born again. He needs to be born again, and so he can enjoy the things of God. Over in the third chapter of John, it says there was a man named Nicodemus who came to Jesus by night and said to him, Teacher, we know you're a uh, rabbi, rather. We know you're a teacher come from God. For no man can do these things that you do except that God be with him. Well, Jesus, Nicodemus was wrong from the start. He's not a teacher come from God, but he's rather a God that came to teach. He is the Lord God. Jesus later said, I and my Father are one. We're the same. So when you talk to Jesus, you're talking to the Father. When you praise God, believe in Jesus, you're believing in the Father. And so they're one. Then he went on to say that, uh, that uh, unless you are born again, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. Unless you're born again. Unless you're born of water and the Spirit, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. And Nicodemus said, how can this be? And he said, now, you must be born of water. That is a natural birth, a fleshly birth. But then there comes a spiritual birth that's needed. And that's the second birth, the spiritual birth that comes when you believe in Jesus. And God gives you a new spirit, and you're born again. 
and you belong to God. You're born again. Amen. And when you're born again, you're saved forever. Hallelujah. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. As saved from a devil's hell. Saved to walk with the God forever. You'll still make mistakes, but you'll be forgiven because they're already paid for. And you'll be on your way to heaven, and you'll have a new nature, a new desire in your heart. You begin to want to do the right thing. You want to read the Bible and try to live by it. You want to love people instead of hate them. You want to think about others even more than you think about yourself. And so these things take place when you're born again. Amen. I have uh, comments come to me on the YouTube of these messages from all over the world. Hallelujah. I got one the other day and it said, Dear Brother Humphreys, he said, I, I, am, I heard and been listening to your messages for a long while. He's, and this, it happened to be a lady. And she said, back in uh, 2016, uh, this is 2018, so it's been two years ago. She said, back in 2016, I uh, listened to your message on the fact that you need to be born again. She said, I want you to know I've accepted Christ. I'm born again. And I've been re rejoicing in the Lord ever since. Amen. Wonderful. I don't know where she lives, but out there somewhere, either in the United States or somewhere out there in the world, she has believed in Jesus and has been born again. And so, oh, praise God, her name is written in heaven. I want you that to happen to you. I want it to happen to you because God can do it. And God will do it. Oh, I thank God. All of creation. All of creation. You know, when Moses saw the burning bush, and walked over to it, and the bush was burning, but it was not consumed. And this is in the book of Exodus. And uh, then God Almighty spoke out of that burning bush. He had come down from heaven, and there he was speaking in the burning bush. And uh, Moses humbled himself and heard him. Um, Elizabeth Browning, uh, wrote these words. She said that uh, he heaven uh, uh, is, is plenteous all over the earth. All over the earth. She said every bush is on the on fire of God. She said some people see it and they take off their shoes like Moses. But others look at it and pay no attention and go on. I want you to take off your shoes. That is, I want you to believe this is the Bible, the book of God, the Word of God. And I want you to believe that He who created the heavens made you. And He who made you loves you. And you belong to Him if you believe in Jesus. And you belong to Him and you will be His forever. And He'll never leave you. He's with you forever. He's going to stay with you till you get home. He's going to be with you in that problem you're facing right now. He says, hold on. I know what you're going through, and I'm going through with you. Praise God. Praise God. If you've never said, I really prayed and asked the Lord to, to forgive you, you need to do that. And just pray a brief prayer and say, Dear God, please forgive me. I believe in Jesus. I believe he died for me and paid for all my sins. I believe that he rose again. I believe he's coming back. Come in my heart, Lord Jesus. Help me live for you. Amen. Pray a prayer like that, and you'll be saved from a devil's hell. And you'll live with God forever one day, and he'll even be with you down here. And the great creator will become your sustainer and strength, your hope and your help, and your mighty God and your heavenly Father. Oh, he'll become your blessed Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord. And so trust Him. What a great God. What a great God. Created it all. Created it all. And praise God. With Him, you're going to go through. You're going to keep going. You're going to be able to look up and say, By the grace of God, we are going to make it. Now you're here so that God can love you. You're here so that you can have fellowship with God and with each other. And so remember that. Remember that. A great God. A great God.